Good morning, everyone. Today we are going to discuss uh, important topic: simple pendulum. And the time period of the simple pendulum. We have we need to show that the motion of a simple pendulum is a simple harmonic motion. And as well as we see the laws of the simple pendulum, as well as the seconds pendulum. Okay, now. To learn about the simple pendulum, we must know what they mean by simple pendulum. What they mean by a simple pendulum? Simple pendulum is an arrangement in which a metal bob, a metal bob is connected with the rigid support with the help of a massless inextensible spring. So. What is the simple pendulum? Simple pendulum is an arrangement which contains a metal bob is connected with rigid support. With the help of massless and inextensible spring. So the arrangement in which a metal bob is connected with the rigid support with the help of a massless and inextensible string is called as the simple pendulum what is a massless massless means it has a negligible mass not a zero mass but it has a negligible mass which can be neglected during the calculation and inextensible inextensible means the length of the string does not increases even after a metal bob is attached to it so these are the two properties of the spring with which a metal bob is connected to the rigid support now we are going to see here the motion of the simple pendulum is a simple harmonic motion what is the property of simple harmonic motion if we have to show the motion of a body of a particle is a simple harmonic motion then we need to show that this f force is directly proportional to the displacement and this negative sign indicate that this force and displacement are oppositely directed so what we have to do here we need to do a simple relation show that f is directly proportional to minus of x okay for such a proof we consider here a simple pendulum what is the simple pendulum we already seen that a simple pendulum is a metal bob of mass m is connected with this rigid support with the help of massless and inextensible spring of length L. So we can consider here length L. Now consider mass of the metal bob is equal to M. Now what happens when this simple pendulum started its motion then what happens at initially it is at the equilibrium position and at the equilibrium position all the forces balances each other so the resultant force on this metal bob is equal to zero so when this simple pendulum performing a motion then what happens it come to the point b which is nothing but the 
extreme position according to the simple harmonic motion. We consider here that it is simple and random. It is when it's performed motion, it comes to the point B. When it is at the point B, it is acted upon by some forces. Now it is not in the equilibrium position. Okay, as it is in the equilibrium position at point A, but at point B it is not in the equilibrium position. So, what are the forces acting on this point B? The first force acting on this point B, metal bomb at point B, is its weight, mg. If m is the mass and g is the gravity, then the weight of the object which is acting in the downward direction towards the center of the earth is equal to mg. Now, as this metal ball is connected with the rigid support with a massless and inextensible string, a tension arises within the string and the direction of a tension is always towards the support. So, what is the second force? The second force is nothing but the tension acting which is equal to mesh. So, there are two types of forces acting on this metal ball. Now, this mass or this weight is divided into two positions, into two components. Okay. So, this weight mg is divided into two components. The first component is mg cos theta. This mg cos theta, what is the function of this mg cos theta? This mg cos theta balances the tension within the string. Okay, so we can say that the tension within the string is equal to the mg cos theta which is the cosine component of the mass. Then another component is the mg sin theta which is nothing but what is it is nothing but the restoring force. What? What is restoring force? The force which tries to regain its original condition is called as a restoring force. And what this component is doing? This component is trying to bring this metal block at its initial position. So we can say that this mg sin theta is nothing but the restoring force. But what is the difference between? The force is directed in this direction and the displacement is in the opposite direction. Okay. Displacement always measured from the mean position. So the displacement is directed towards this position, towards this direction and the force, restoring force is in the opposite direction. So we can say that this restoring force is equal to this restraining force, we denote this force as F. This F is equal to minus mg sin theta. If this angle is very small, if this angle is very small, then we can declare this sin theta and we can write only this F is equal to minus m g into theta. Okay. Why? This is because if the value of theta is very small, then we can neglect its sine theta and take the value of theta in the radial form. So, what is this f? f is equal to minus m g into theta. But, if we see from this diagram, there is a triangle in which we can apply a law of sin theta and cos theta. Okay, so what is the triangle? The triangle OA 
in tangent to theta. What is theta is equal to? What is theta is equal to? Theta is equal to this x multiplied by this or divided by x. So we can write here this theta is equal to x divided by l. This can be obtained from here also. What is sin theta is equal to? Sin theta means it is opposite side by the hypotenuse. What is the opposite side is equal to x. Okay. And what is the hypotenuse? The hypotenuse is equal to l. So we can write this theta is equal to x by l. So what is l? So this l is equal to minus l g x divided by now this f is equal to a constant m g upon n and it is multiplied by x and this is the minus sign. Okay, the quantities, the terms inside the brackets are remains constant during the motion, the mass does not change with the motion acceleration due to gravity remains constant and this L length length of the simple pendulum also remains constant so F is equal to minus this term multiplied by X so we can write here this F is proportional to minus of X so what is the meaning of F is proportional to minus X f is proportional to minus x means that this type of motion, the motion of the simple pendulum is nothing but the simple harmonic motion because this is the condition for the simple harmonic motion in which the force is always proportional to the displacement but they are oppositely directed. So from this relation we can conclude that the force is proportional to minus of x so the motion of the simple pendulum is a simple harmonic motion ok now this is all about to show that the motion of a simple pendulum is a simple harmonic motion now we are going to derive a simple relation for the time period of the simple pendulum. Now we know that what is the time period? Time period is nothing but the time required to complete one oscillation. Time required to complete one oscillation. It is called as the time period. And how we can calculate this time period? We are starting from this equation. We know that the time period is equal to t is equal to 2 pi divided by omega. Okay, now we have to calculate the value of omega. So, what is the omega? Omega is nothing but the angular velocity or angular frequency. Then, how we can calculate this? So, here we derive a relation f is equal to m g x and it is divided by L like this. So, we are not taking the minus sign here because we need the magnitude. Okay, so here we are going to take the magnitude of this force. This F is equal to mgx upon L. So, if we write this F by M, this M is transfer to this side. So, it is F by M is equal to G upon L into X. What is G upon L into X? So what is F by M? According to the Newton's second law, this force is equal to mass multiplied by acceleration. Therefore, we can write acceleration is equal to force divided by mass. So this F by M can be replaced by the acceleration of the metal ball that is A is 
is equal to g by l into s. So this is the value of a acceleration. Therefore, we can write there this a by x is equal to g by l. So then what is the omega of this equation of omega of a by x? We know that a is equal to omega square into x. Okay. Now there is what is omega square is equal to which is equal to a by x. So this is a by x, this is a by x, therefore we can write this omega square is equal to g by l. So Therefore, this omega square is equal to g divided by l. Therefore, what is omega is equal to? It is equal to under root g by l. So, therefore, what is the time? Time t is equal to 2 pi divided by under root. g by l which is equal to 2 pi under root l divided by g. So this is the equation for the time period of a simple pendulum having length l and velocity g. Okay, this is the equation for the time period t is equal to 2 pi under root g by l or we can also write 2 pi under root l divided by g. Now, from this relation, we can state the laws of the simple pendulum. Okay, so what are the laws of simple pendulum state? It states that, the first law states that the time period of the simple pendulum is directly proportional to the square root of length. It is directly proportional to the square root of L, that is length. It means as the length of the simple pendulum increases, its time period also increases. Okay, as the length increases, it requires more time it requires more time to complete one oscillation. Okay, this is the meaning of this first law. It is proportional to the square root of L. And what is the second? The second is inversely proportional to. What? It is inversely proportional to the square root of G. It means as the value of gravity increases, as the value of gravity increases, the value of time period decreases. And as the value of g decreases, as the value of g, that is gravity decreases, the time period increases. Time period increases means it requires more time to complete one oscillation. So, these are two laws. We can state another law. This time period does not depend upon the mass. It is independent of mass. Why? Because there is no term in this equation of mass. So we can say that the time period of this simple pendulum, the time period of this simple pendulum does not depend upon the mass of the metal block either it is 1 gram either it is 10 gram if the conditions are kept constant then it must be completed one oscillation in a given time okay then the fourth one is it is independent of the amplitude it is independent of the amplitude what is the amplitude amplitude means this angle theta if this metal work performs such type of oscillation 
they the time frame remains constant it does not depend upon the distance if the distance is increases the time frame will remain same it remains constant it does not depend upon the amplitude so we can write it is independent of the amplitude so these are the four laws which can be stated with the help of this equation t is equal to 2 pi now from this equation we can say that the frequency of this simple pendulum is equal to 1 by t which is equal to this 1 upon 2 pi that is under root g divided by l this is the equation for the frequency okay now we are moving towards the special type of simple pendulum which is nothing but the second pendulum okay Seconds pendulum. Seconds pendulum means a special type of simple pendulum having time period t is equal to two second. It means a special type of simple pendulum which complete one oscillation within two seconds. In two seconds, it is called as the seconds pendulum. Okay, this is the condition. Why it is called as second pendulum? Second pendulum means it required two seconds to complete one oscillation. It is called the second pendulum. Now, so what is the condition for the second pendulum? How we can get the uh, time period of any pendulum is equal to two seconds? So, what are the conditions? This condition can be derived by using this equation. So. We know that the time period of a simple pendulum t is equal to two pi under root l by g. Okay. Now, by squaring this equation, we can write here this t square is equal to four pi square l divided by g. What is the L? L is the length of the simple pendulum. Now, what is t is equal to here in the second pendulum? It is equal to two seconds. So, what is the t square? This t square is equal to four. Is equal to four pi square into L divided by g. So, this four and four get cancelled. This four and four get cancelled. Therefore, what is the value of L? The L Is equal to it is g divided by pi square. This is g and this is pi square. Okay, so if we have to derive the time period is equal to two second, then we must need to keep the length l is equal to g upon pi r square. So what is the length? This length is depend upon the gravity. Okay, if the gravity changes, the length of the second pendulum also get changes. So this is the relation for the second pendulum, which states that L is equal to g upon pi r squared. So in this lecture, we discuss the simple pendulum. What is the simple pendulum? Then we show that the motion of the simple pendulum is a simple harmonic motion. Then we derive a relation for the time period of the simple pendulum. From this relation, we state the four laws of the simple pendulum, and then we are see the second pendulum. So today we discuss all about the simple pendulum. 
in the next lecture we discuss about the angular okay angular simple harmonic motion so it is enough for today have a good day bye